This video demonstrates the proper procedures for determining the air content of freshly mixed concrete by the pressure method using a type B air meter. This air content test is intended for plastic concrete made with relatively dense aggregates for which an aggregate correction factor can be determined. Mixtures with aggregate that would be retained on a 2 inch sieve shall be wet sieved over a one and a half inch sieve. This test must be conducted on a flat, level, and firm surface. The tamping rod can be used to verify that the work surface is flat and level. Concrete in the measuring bowl is consolidated either by rotting or vibration, depending on the measured slump. Rod concretes with a slump greater than 3 inches. Vibrate concretes with a slump less than 1 inch. Rod or vibrate concretes with a slump of 1 to 3 inches. When consolidation is by rotting, the measuring bowl is filled in three layers of approximately equal volume. When consolidation is by vibration, fill the bowl in two layers. The equipment needed for this test includes a Type B pressure meter, scoop, tamping rod, mallet, strike-off bar, syringe, and container of water. A Type B pressure meter consists of a measuring bowl and cover assembly. The cover assembly includes two petcocks, which provide a means to introduce water and maintain pressure in the meter an air chamber, pump, and bleeder valve to generate a volume of compressed air, a gauge which displays the initial pressure line and measured air content, and the main air valve which releases the compressed air in the chamber into the measuring bowl. The scoop shall be sized to obtain representative material from the receptacle and not spill as concrete is placed in the bowl. The tamping rod shall be a round, straight steel rod with a 5 8 inch diameter. It shall be no less than 16 inches in length with the tamping end rounded to a hemispherical tip. The mallet is used to close voids left by the tamping rod and to release any large air bubbles trapped in the concrete. The strike-off bar shall be a flat, straight steel bar at least one-eighth inch thick, three-quarters of an inch wide, and twelve inches long. This standard permits the use of a mechanical vibrator to consolidate concretes having a slump of three inches or less. When the size of the coarse aggregate permits density to be measured in the bowl, strike off and finish the concrete surface with a strike off plate. Begin by properly obtaining a representative sample of fresh concrete. Next, dampen the interior of the bowl. Using the scoop, place the first layer of concrete into the bowl. Move the scoop around the bowl to distribute the concrete. Consolidate the concrete by rotting the layer through its depth 25 times, no more and no less. Now, tap the exterior of the bowl 10 to 15 times with the mallet. Add the second layer of concrete to the bowl. Rod the layer 25 times. The rod should penetrate through the second layer and into the first layer about one inch.
Tap the exterior of the bowl 10 to 15 times with the mallet. Add the third layer of concrete to the bowl. Rod the layer 25 times. The rod should penetrate through the third layer and into the second layer about one inch. Tap the exterior of the bowl 10 to 15 times with the mallet. If necessary, add or remove representative material to correct a deficiency or excess. Approximately 1 8 inch of material above the rim of the bowl is considered optimal. Strike off any excess concrete using the strike off bar in a sawing motion until the bowl is just level full. When a vibrator is used to consolidate the concrete, insert the vibrator three times per layer. Evenly distribute the points of insertion and do not allow the vibrator to touch the bowl. Place all concrete for a layer into the bowl before consolidating the layer. Do not allow froth to escape from the concrete. When removing the vibrator, ensure no air pockets remain. When using the strike off plate to remove excess concrete, follow the procedures as described in the density test. Now, thoroughly clean the flange and rim of the bowl. Confirm that all air has been released from the air chamber, that the main air valve is closed, and that both petcocks are open. Next, dampen the underside of the cover assembly along with the O-ring. Seat the cover on the bowl and engage the clamping mechanism. Using the syringe, add water through one petcock until a steady stream emerges from the opposite petcock. Gently jar the meter until all air has been expelled. Continue by pumping air into the air chamber until the gauge hand is near the initial pressure line. Add and bleed air until the gauge hand is positioned on the appropriate initial pressure line. Lightly tap the gauge to stabilize the position of the gauge hand. While the compressed air cools, check the meter for leaks. The presence of any leak invalidates the test. Close both petcocks. Then open the main air valve to release the compressed air into the measuring bowl. While holding the main air valve open, tap the outside of the bowl with the mallet to release any local restraints. Also. Lightly tap the gauge to stabilize the position of the gauge hand. Now release the main air valve. 
Read and record the measured air content. With the main air valve closed, release the pressure in the meter by opening both petcocks. Cover the petcocks with your hands to prevent the spray of water. The cover assembly may now be removed. The final air content is computed by subtracting the aggregate correction factor from the meter reading. When the final air content is less than 8%, report the air content to the nearest tenth of a percent. When the final air content exceeds 8%, report the air content to the nearest half division on the gauge scale. Refer to the data sheet related to this training module for a copy of the data collected during this demonstration and any associated computations. Also, refer to the slide presentation related to this training module for a set of example computations and a practice problem. Don't forget to clean your equipment.